Hello and welcome to Griffin Art. Now in my last video I showed you how to produce a napkin fold that would create these little boot shapes that resembled something that might be worn by a Christmas elf. Now sticking to the same theme I thought that I would show you how to make an elf hat and that is actually something that is quite in proportion with the little slipper or boots as well. Now this is not a very structured fold. It's uh, you know quite a creative one. There's a lot of fiddling that goes on. And in actual fact, in this particular instance, it is easier to produce this napkin fold using a material napkin. Uh, but because it's harder with the paper serviette, that's why I'm going with that option on camera so that you've got an idea of that. Now to give you an idea of napkin size, I'm going to be using a standard serviette size for the UK and when this is fully opened out, as you may have already realised from my other videos, this is in the region of 16 inches square-ish, because they're not actually square, um, and the linen napkins that I use are in the region of 18 inches square when fully opened out. Now to give you an idea of how that impacts on the size of the finished item, this is a version that's created out of that linen, or actually this is Egyptian cotton napkin as well, so I hope that you can see the difference there. Okay, so I think we may as well just get started. So as usual, for the purposes of those who are using a linen napkin and will be starting out with just a single layer of square, I'm going to be opening out this napkin here so that we can create that same scenario. So the first thing that we need to do is to fold that square in half. So that's often a starting point for a lot of napkin folds. And make sure that you've got your crease nicely into place. Now the only thing that you need to make sure of here is that you've got the two flaps closest to you and this is the fold line here. Now, with a, because this is a paper napkin, the fold line is tending to go into a mountain fold. Um, and that's gonna be easier for me if I turn that over. So if you're using a paper napkin and you've got that crease line in place, just make sure it's the valley fold that you've got. So it's naturally going to fold in that direction. So that wants to be in front of you. So that's the last of the precise folds. We are putting no more specific creases into this napkin from this point forward. So it's simply a rolling technique. We're going to make a cone and I will just show you what you need to be looking out for. If you've got a linen napkin, just fold this in half and make a little crease in the top corner so that you can identify where the center of that top edge is. Once you've ascertained that, you're just going to create a cone shape based on that little fold, that little corner crease there. And you're sort of lining this up with the point that's down here to give you an idea of where to start. And just roll that around. Now, by the time that you get to this point, what you're actually looking for, not exactly on the fold, because actually as you roll more round, this uh, needs to, more space to, to get into the same position. So I tend to space mine slightly away from the center line when I'm in, in the completed position. But you're looking for a relatively even kite shape here. And if you continue to fold around, keeping it fairly tight, then what you're looking for now is that when you get to that position here, you've got your two points opposite each other. So as long as you're in that sort of area, you'll be fine. And you just continue to fold that around until you've got that fully folded position. I just wanted you to be able to see this. So you can see already here that the points, these points are opposite. They're going to form those flaps here. And that's, you want them to be relatively opposite, although it's not precise. It doesn't need to be exact. So at this stage, we're going to start creating a cuff. Now, I tend to try and keep a hold of this little layer here because it, it tends to unravel if you're not careful. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to use my finger to create a sort of valley section. You know, push down into the layers of material, whether you're using paper or 
uh, linen or something like that and you're going to nip that to hold that in place and that's going to start the bottom edge of your cup so if I just show you on the inside what that's starting to look like so I hope you can see that you're just getting this little folded bit and that's got the bulk of all those fabric layers and you're just going to gently work your way around and it is fiddly with paper because unlike fabric there's no real bias to paper and it doesn't want to give so you're just going to have to be very careful it's like turning a sock inside out but extremely gently so it may take me a little bit because I don't want to tear the paper and this is why I could have taken the easy option and gone with a fabric version but you know we don't always want to be using fabric napkins and I'd rather that you could see what you're up against if you're using a paper one so there we go so for the first instance you're just getting everything nice and straightened out eradicating as much bulk as you possibly can now just keep fiddling with that I'm actually going to do that on camera because I don't want to waste too much of your time but I think you can start to see how that's already starting to come together but there is some bulk in here that I want to get rid of so I'm going to continue to fiddle off camera and then I'll come back to you when I'm happy with that that's much better so if I just show you now that's quite nice and neat there all around that edge and these points are nicely positioned either side it's quite neat and tidy all around and that will stand up quite nicely as well now at this point you've got some options you could simply leave that like that if you like that sort of shape that's absolutely fine if you prefer something more like that then you just simply need to turn down these edges a bit so I'll show you how, you know, it depends what your preference is really. There's that option there and I'll give you the third option which takes it a step further as well. Now before I bring in that third variation I just do want to really emphasize here that there, this is a very creative napkin. You know, it's not precise so it's really all about what you prefer as an individual on an aesthetic basis. So, you know, this is just giving you those ideas so that you can make the choice. Now, this third option here is isn't very little different. So we've got that one where we've done nothing much to it. This one, we've laid down the flaps. This one, we've laid down the flaps. Well, you can see in a very different way because that's actually not even the same. But also, I've just created a little S crease on the top here to sort of crease out the tip of that hat to make it look, in my view, perhaps a little bit more like an elf hat there but you know it's as i say depends whether you're going on a more formal basis you want a little bit of fun it's all of those things that you need to take into consideration now i will show you the approach using this one and um, how we get to this and then from there to here so i'll do that next but just before i do that i want to show you those two second options in this uh Egyptian cotton version so this is the one with it folded down like that second option there and then we've got this one which again the folds are quite a lot different uh, from this one it, they always vary and that's had that little crease put in the top a bit like that one I think it's a little bit like that um, Harry Potter scoring hat if you like but there you go so I'll take you through those phases next Right, so let's just clear that one out of our way. I'll leave that one sort of in the, not that one, I need to leave this one just there so that you can see what we're going from. So we're going to go from this to that. So it's simply a question of just folding down in the first instance, just doubling that cuff back up on both sides. And I tend to do that in a double layer because then you can separate the layers afterwards. So just on both sides, just folding it back down, straightening it out a little bit. And you see that's just to me that that doesn't do enough so then I can separate these layers a little and just draw them up where I want them to be just adds a bit of variation I suppose I'm a fiddler I'm a you know <laughs> I fiddle for hours 
So, you know, it's, it, if, if you're a fiddler, just, just have a bit of a play and see what you prefer, because you can probably come up with some other ideas as well. So that's quite straightforward, as you can see. It does look different from that one, but, you know, it's that creative aspect. So uh, that takes you to that stage. So let's just set that one aside and we'll move on to this one here because it, this is just the final phase to get that little bit of creasing in. Now how many creases you want to put into your uh, hat is entirely up to you but I tend to just put a little S fold in so about this point here I'm going to dent in and bend that back and then I'm just bending it, I hope you can see that alright, just bending it back again so it's almost an S shape at the top of the hat and keeping my fingers inside the hat I'm just sort of creasing that up a bit and then you can flatten it out do what you like really but um, that just adds in an extra little crease and you can you could go further than that if you chose okay so that's just another little festive napkin fold so we have the hat to go with our boots now so you know it may not it may or may not be something that you can make use of but either way thank you for joining me today and I hope you can join me again in the future.